Hello, everybody. Welcome to tonight's live. I'm Marley. I work for the TVA. I'm this year's Veg Food Fest coordinator. Hello, everybody. Say hi in the chat if you're just joining us. Um, so I will be welcoming our guest, Sean Stratton, in just a moment. Um, but first, I would, of course, like to acknowledge the land that the TVA is situated upon. Um, so that is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the New Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Chippewa, and the Huron-Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis people. We acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 um, with the Mississaugas of the New Credit. Uh, we would also like to thank um, a very generous donor, Mahan Thacker, um, who has graciously sponsored all of the digital programming for this week, um, and he does so in memory of his mother, Narbita Thacker. So, as you know, we've got a lot of great lives happening this week. Check for the full schedule on our feed or on our um, website. Um, I hope to see some of you on Saturday as well when we have our live event. Uh, let me know if you're coming to our live event. Type it in the chat if you're coming on Saturday. Um, you, of course, do need a ticket for contact tracing and um, crowd purposes. So they're selling fast. Get them ASAP. Get them right now if you don't have a ticket for Saturday. Um, now on to the man of the hour. Um, Sean. And Sean, if you're here and you want to uh, request to join, please do so. Um, so I came across Sean because um, I was editing some of last year's programming. So we had a great panel, which is now up on our YouTube, about uh, vegan filmmakers. And we had about five vegan filmmakers, and um, Sean was on the panel. And I thought how interesting it would be to talk to him specifically because he... Um, runs the International Vegan Film Festival, uh, which is kind of one of a kind to my knowledge. So to talk a little bit about him, he is the founder and director of IVFF. Um, he started the festival in 2018 to inspire, educate, and entertain audiences with vegan themed films from around the world. Um, he also does a lot of other things. He's an international leadership consultant, professional speaker, best-selling author, Iron Man, and ultra marathon competitor. Um, he came to veganism for health concerns after watching several influential documentaries. Um, he and his family, including three young daughters, live in Ottawa and have been eating plant-based since 2015. So let me see if I can find, oh, I see it, I see it. Okay, I'm going John, who should be joining us in just a second from Ottawa. Hi, Sean. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Excellent. So excited to see you. Yeah. Um, and I'll just mention to the audience, if you do have any questions, please put them in the chat and we will try to get to them. So are you, you're based in Ottawa, correct? That's right, yep. yep Amazing, right amazing. But just spent the weekend in Toronto. Okay. The wrong weekend. I, I know, think. I know. I know. It's, next it's a Labor Day long weekend, you know. Yeah. Fair, fair. Did you eat any delicious vegan things while you were in Toronto? I did weekend? actually. The, Tell me. We went. Uh, we went. It's going to be an annual thing because we went there last year. Um, is it Eve's? Uh, the ice cream on Belor. Um, Eva, Eva's. Oh, Eva's. Eva's. Yeah. yeah, Eva's. That's what it is. Eva's. The yeah, the, the, cin the cinnamon bun ice creams. Yeah. Oh, but that's man. they're so good. I'm I'm Hungarian, and those. Um, those pastries are, yeah. are traditional there. Um, oh, really? Yeah, and but it's, no it's sort of a twist to put ice cream in them. Right. I know, and they have a full vegan burger menu too. I kind of think they're I trying to that. enter the scene. I think so. Like we definitely went in there. We're like, where's your vegan ice cream? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we had it last year and it like blew my mind. I'm like, cinnamon bun ice cream cones? I had no idea there was such a thing. <laughs> and, uh, I know, Toronto is the land of dreams, really. Yeah. For Amazing. sure. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, as I said, I loved your panel last year. It's broken thank into you. three um, parts now on our YouTube channel. Mm. Oh, great. Um, but I wanted to specifically talk about IVFF because mm -hmm. it's so cool. Um, I guess I would love to start with the, the genesis, the origin story. Where did we come from? Yeah. And how did we get here? 
<laughs> yeah, it um, goes back to, I guess, the fall of 2017. Uh, I just moved to Ottawa from England. We were living there for a year and my family moved to Ottawa. It was the first time in this area. I'm from Newfoundland originally. My wife's from Calgary and we'd lived in both of those areas. But um, yeah, while I was in England, uh, we'd been vegan for a couple of years at that point, And we'd went to our, our first veg fest while we were over there and went to two or three around England. And I was really interested in them and I was trying to think like, I've always been a bit of an organizer, a bit of an event planner, leader, and entrepreneur. And I was thinking, you know, what can I do to, to serve the vegan community in Ottawa? How could I get involved? And uh, I thought about VegFest because I'd been to a few and I was like, I think I could organize one of these. And then uh, I did some research and I realized, whoa, there is a lot of work to this. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and not that I was scared of a lot of work, but at that time we had a newborn and just the, the time and commitment wasn't, wasn't feasible at that time and got my head thinking. And then I thought, you know, there must be a vegan film festival out there in the world. Maybe I can bring a screening of some other vegan film festival to Ottawa. And I did a bunch of research. I was like, there doesn't seem to be any vegan film festivals in the world. Like that's crazy. Even, you know, at that time in 2017, people were talking about documentaries and how influential they were into going vegan. And I was, I was shocked. Uh, and so I decided to, yeah, do a bit more research, talk to some influencers in the space and see if they thought it was a crazy idea or a good idea. And everybody seemed very supportive. Uh, I didn't come from a film background. I'm not a filmmaker. So I, I was like, oh, I'm, I'll, I'm willing to learn. Here we go. Uh, and my my inspiration was always the Banff Mountain Film Festival. It's a mountain film film a festival of mountain films based in Banff, Alberta. Uh, but they have a world tour every year. They've been going for thirty or forty years, and I've seen their world tour screenings all over the place. And so that's the concept I I came to this with. I didn't want it to be just a one and done event. I wanted it to be. Uh, a film festival, make it a hub for vegan films around the world, and then also have a world tour and, and show in community theaters around the world, kind of a best of the best. And um, yeah, in 2018, we, we kicked off and it was kind of a minimal viable product just to see if this was even viable, if anybody was interested, if anybody would come, if anybody would send in films. Uh, and we were pleasantly surprised. Yeah, we had, I think we had like 25 films from eight countries the first year and um, we've just grown steadily since. Cool. Very cool. Uh, what, um, cause I know your bio says that you had been impacted by documentaries yourself. Mm -hmm. What ones in particular? I would say forks over knives had the biggest impact on me back then. It was, it was all the rage and, and um, kind of making the rounds a lot. Um, yeah. It's kind of a very health focused um, documentary. And uh, my wife was, uh, she watched, we watched Veducated together. And I think I was really tired that day up with the kids or something. And I fell asleep and vegetated. But that was for her, that was her light bulb moment. Yeah. And a couple months later, we watched um, Porks Over Knives. And that was just like, oh, it just makes sense. Like, you know, we were both endurance athletes and we felt like we were living a healthy lifestyle and, and eating healthy food for the most part. And, and, but it, it, so it wasn't like we were having some chronic disease and had to make a huge lifestyle change. It's just like, if this, you know, is helping and preventing heart disease, diabetes, many cancers, hypertension, stroke, all of these things. Like, why wouldn't we do this? And, and that was just basically the genesis of it. Um, my wife, I think, was running training for a marathon and, and had some heard, uh, heard on a podcast that can help recover from some injuries. And she was like so fed up with everything she was doing. She's like, I'm trying anything. Um, but the story of that is that it was two different documentaries that, that were our light bulb moments. And that got me thinking too of like, you know, the more every documentary, everybody absorbs it a different way. And the more we can have out there, the more that documentaries that we can have that are different come from all over the world, that come have different topics, the more light bulbs we're going to switch on with people around the world as, as they watch these. Totally, totally. Um, and I think you, you and the other filmmakers touched on that in last year's panel in a whole section, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's for me. It was um, more of the ethical side. It was it was mm -hmm. un unfortunately seeing slaughterhouse footage, um, but like we all have our way in. Well, that's it. Yeah, I, I always like the quote that say, uh, "Come for your health, stay for the animals." Yeah. And uh, yeah, very quickly once we kind of got absorbed into this lifestyle and um, started, you know, watching more documentaries and, and reading, and it was it was just as much health as environment or animals are reasons for sure yeah. as evolved for um, since then. Cool. So on that kind of same train of thought, what, um, 
what trends have you seen in, you know, maybe the past couple of years or what trends are you now seeing headed into the 2021 festival? Yeah, it's, uh, it's tricky with trends because of obviously COVID <laughs> and yeah. the impact <laughs> that COVID has had on in every industry, but um, in particular, the film industry for, for us, uh, it's been, um, I think it's been hard for filmmakers, obviously, to get out and film content. And um, a lot of, you know, quality filmmakers are trying not to just have a, a film of Zoom meetings or, a, you know, a Zoom calls. And it's, um, it's funny, you know, the evening news now, they don't have reporters go out anywhere. Everybody just FaceTimes or Zooms in or yeah. Skype or whatever. And they, they get their news, which is great and cheap for them. But it doesn't really lend itself to, like, impactful quality um, interviewing and uh, emotional storytelling that you get yeah. from vegan films. And so I think it's been impacted that way in terms of the feature films. We're having kind of less feature films being submitted. So feature films kind of being over 60 minutes long. Um, I think some of that is because it's been hard to get that amount of content, um, that type of content that goes into a feature film. And um, a lot of focus more on, yeah, on the shorter films. Um, and And the storytelling is really changing in that, uh, you know, before there was a lot of more animal slaughterhouse films or behind the scenes footage. And um, a few years ago, that would kind of just speak for itself. And, um, and that was it. And a lot of times it would turn people off and they wouldn't watch it or people wouldn't watch it because they knew what was coming. And uh, I think that that film, that, that footage serves a purpose. But at the same time, um, we want to make it um, absorbable, adaptable, I mean, you know, consumable for for those um, vegan curious, not just the vegans. And and even the vegans don't want to watch it because they're like, I saw that once. <laughs> I'm yeah. going back there. And so I think story, uh, the filmmakers are doing a better job of like really telling stories behind this footage and, and maybe only using a fraction of that footage. Or even if they're really good, they don't use any of the, you know, the blood, guts and gore at all, but they have it implied in the film. So you know what's going on, but they're just telling. So you know, the past couple of years, there's been films more about like an individual in that industry. And the story's about the individual working in that industry. It's not just check out what's going on. It's yeah. let's hear the story. Like, what was it like to work there? What was it like to behind the scenes? Or um, stories, this area, stories of, of a photographer that works in, you know, animal, animal rights and, and animal welfare. And that the story is kind of about her and her experience capturing this footage of animal, of, of animal slaughterhouses, not necessarily just the slaughterhouses. So, um, yeah, they're, I think they're evolving. They're becoming better. The more quality, better quality each year. Um, you know, the bigger in environmental and animal rights organizations are putting more money into film. Mm -hmm. um, we've got films from PETA this year. We've got films from uh, the Humane Society. Uh, so that some of the big ones are, are putting more of their budget into it because I think they see those kind of the YouTube public service announcements going viral. And, yeah. um, and that is a great way to get their message out instead of, you know, just handing out the flyers that they can do only for so many people at so many times and, and places. And in the last couple of years, obviously there wasn't a lot of flyer handing out. Totally, totally. Um, have there been, I, I know that um, a lot of the programming has been um, documentary. Has there been any fictional films? Yeah, yeah, Thanks. there's been a few fictional films for sure. And there's a few more this year. Um, yeah, fictional films the way just kind of the way to tell a story that, um, yeah, doesn't come across as a fiction, but, or doesn't come across as, as documentary style where it's, uh, have, there's one story from Scotland this year that utilizes this young lady and they're, it's, it's just fairly disturbing film, but powerful in that they are showing these women in a room all on breastfeeding pumps. And they're mimicking them as if they were cows in yeah. the farm being milked every day. And so these women go into this classroom, sit down and they have breast pumps on and it's just pumping away and, and it evolves from there. Uh, you know, that's clearly a yeah. fictional, fictional storytelling, yeah. um, but it's impactful and it gets the message across for sure. You know, we've had some music videos in the past years. We have another music video this year. Um, yeah, yeah, we've had some kind of some really funny ones. There was one uh, a Canadian one a couple of years ago. I forget the name of it now, but it was just kind of making fun of vegans. And they had, you know, it was a workplace environment. And they put out some donuts and they just left them there. And they were seeing who was coming back for them. And they said they were vegan donuts and no one was going near them. <laughs> and they had like the hidden camera. And throughout the day, everybody was coming in and just sneaking one here and there. And and so yeah, we we, we definitely. Um, Get get a mix of, of films, but more the mo mostly are, are documentaries. 
Understandably. That, um, have you seen Taika Waititi's um, Save Ralph? Yes, yeah. Yeah, it has been reminds... submitted. Oh, has it? Yeah, it's in the Interesting. Festival. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's sort of um, the, the breastfeeding idea is sort of mm. the opposite, the opposition right. where um, they're sort of humanizing Ralph and Anyway, yeah, I guess people will see it, but yeah, um, it's it's powerful. It's an extremely amazing powerful, yeah. and it's you know it's four minutes long. Um, yeah, and there's oh, a, there's a, I cried, I cried yeah. tears. And there's there's a great. Um, we're gonna talk to them so they can submit that with it. Um, a making of that film. Cool. Yeah, behind the scenes because it's such a it's a it's a it's an animated film. It's a, I forget the name of it. It's like a, a short animated film, but um, it's really neat. The yeah, the the time and energy and work that went into creating that. Scene. Yeah. And all the voices too. They're de like all the voices are celebrities that you don't necessarily right. think think they are. Uh, anyway, very cool. Very very cool. Yeah, yeah. It'd be great to try to get some some um, Q and A's in the festival with some of those folks that were involved. With yeah. That. So we're kind of in that stage right now of starting to reach out to people. Cool. So our viewers should definitely stay tuned and follow mm -hmm. Vegan Film Festival for all that content. Um, another thing that I thought was really cool that I didn't realize that uh, y'all did was the photo essay contest and mm -hmm. uh, the vegan cookbook contest. And I was actually taken aback by how powerful the photo essays mm. were. Um, Cause there was quite a, um, a, quite a stark difference between different photography. Like there was a very dark photography and there mm -hmm. were, were beautiful photos of animals free. Yeah, yeah, joyful. Yeah. Have you always done the photo essay? No, we added it in the second year, I believe we added it. Uh, so this is going on the third year of the photo essay and the cookbook contest we added this year. But yeah, um, yeah some part of the photo essay was, you know, I wanted to put it out there. Some professional photos submit their photos, but I also wanted to have a way that the general public could get involved in the festival. And anybody with a camera can create an essay. And an essay is three to five photos that tell a story. Cool. And um yeah, it's just a way to get more people involved and obviously another medium of media to try to get our message out to people. Another another way to spark and have that light bulb moment for people. Very cool. Yeah, some were, then, some were past years were like sanctuary photos of like these animals running free and then others were like duck hunting in Australia. <laughs> you know, and um, one was called Next in Line and this was most powerful. It was animals that were alive that in the footage in the picture, they could see a dead animal of them. So oh it was like rabbits God. with a bunch of dead rabbits around them. And this rabbit is like in the cage with the dead rabbits around them. And it had that for chickens and a couple other animals. And that was like, wow. Yeah. And that in a way, because we were talking to um, Camille Labchuk last night, mm -hmm. um, who's an animal rights lawyer. And um, she was referencing some studies that, um, that she will bring up in arguments against people that imply that animals don't have feelings. Um, and I think it's it's so interesting that all you need to do though is look at that yeah. photo. Yeah, you don't need yeah. the study. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So. And then, um, yeah, the cookbook contest is was the first year this year. Um, I can mention talking a little about that. Yeah, again. please. Um, and that's been amazing. That has been a really interesting experience. Uh, true success. You know, I again like the first year at the films. I didn't know if I was going to get any cookbooks in. We didn't know if we were going to get five or ten or what. And we ended up with twenty cookbooks. You have huge names. Like yeah. the names on those cookbooks, there are a couple of people that I'm obsessed with. So I'm yeah, excited like to see Paul McCartney. Who... Yeah. Paul McCartney and his yeah. daughter sent theirs in. Um, Jane Goodall's book is her new cookbook. Um, Lauren Toyota from Toronto, Hot Food. Yeah. Zachary uh, Miyoko. Bird from Australia is probably like the most viral vegan TikToker. Really? I didn't know he was. Uh, I, again, I'm not on that TikTok that much, but yeah, the vegan junk food. Yeah, he's the funniest vegan alive. Like, no watch, way. go watch him on, uh, okay. check out his Instagram. He's the funniest. Yeah. yeah, I've been seeing some of his Instagram stuff. And yeah, so we've been really, really impressed and, and really happy with, uh, with those. And we actually have a four extra vegan junk food cookbooks that we're going to be giving away over the next few weeks. Oh my god! Yeah, so stay tuned. Oh um, and we've got a few more other cookbooks that we're going to start with uh, giveaways probably the 1st of October. I love that. Yeah. But, I want um, yeah, I so it's been, it's been a great success uh, having 20 cookbooks come in. And, and a lot of it was, you know, cookbooks are such a gateway for people to become vegan. You know, what's the, one of the first things people say that are interested but scared? They're like, I don't know what to cook. It's like, well, there's a bazillion cookbooks out there. We're like, I don't know which cookbook to get. Yeah. It's like, okay, we're going to cut it down for you. We're going to have a contest. We're going to tell you, you know, the top tier, the best cookbooks for this or for that. 
and, and that'll make it easy for you. And so we're going to tell you, you know, the top five cookbooks of this year or the last two years and, and maybe gravitate for those. Um, and depending on what you are, you know, we could almost niche down smaller and say that the best family cooking cookbook, yeah. the best ethnic food cookbook, but we're vegan cookbooks is already pretty small niche. So <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to just have two or three cookbooks for category, but um, we'll see how it evolves next year. So but, yeah. yeah, coming up, we'll, uh, we'll be announcing it shortly in, in o October, the kind of the top cookbooks of the year. Cool. Cool. So then looking towards October, um, what, how, can you describe how the festival is going to look in our COVID world um, and how people can, can attend essentially? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, officially, we haven't officially made any announcements, but it looks like we, we may have to cancel the in-person screening on October 31st. Um, we were planning a full day of films then uh, and talking with the theater who still isn't currently open, the theater we have booked. Um, and, and there are some other theaters around town that are open, but they're at like 30% capacity. Yeah. And that would be a lot of work to, for, for such a small audience that we could have um, come there. Um, but we definitely are having our virtual festival. So our virtual festival will kick off on October 31st, Halloween, and runs for a week to November 7th. And, and that's great because we can show so many more films that we can show at the in-person one. Yeah. Um, I think last year we showed uh, 10 or 12 different films, uh, maybe even more than maybe 20 films. No, no, no. We showed 25 films last year to the world and we showed 28 just to Canada. There was three films that had um, distribution or geo-blocking mm -hmm. because of their distributor. Okay. Um, so we'll probably have about that again, 20 to 25 films okay. um, again this year, ranging about 10, 10 or 12 hours of filming. Um, that you can watch over the week and um, don't try to watch them all you know every now and every year we, we get some people saying it wasn't enough time I didn't get to watch them all it's like well you're not supposed to watch like 12 hours of video in a week um, yeah. and we have those into blocks of blocks you can buy so you can buy a block ticket um, and they'll be about 90 minutes each so one block may be one feature film or it may be four or five shorter films gotcha. uh, the films range from two minutes to two hours okay and um, yeah, all that will be on our website in, in the coming weeks, um, try to get tickets in that for, for that event. Um, and then after that, we hope to have our world tour kick off in, in January, 2022. Yeah, so uh, what, what, can you describe what the world tour like looked mm -hmm. like pre-COVID and, and I guess what you hope that it'll look like? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the world tour is a way to bring the best of the best from the films, um, from the film festival each year. And so we, we narrow down the films to really the best short films. And sometimes we show a feature of a section film, but it's about two hours, two hours, 15 minutes of running time of films. And so it's about a three hour event by the time you put an intermission in. Um, and we work with local hosts around the world. And so a local host say in Toronto, it was the TVA ran it in February, 2020, just before COVID. Um, and so the local hosts pay a licensing fee based on the size of the venue they're going to host it in. Um, and so it's available no matter how small or big you are. It, it, we, we work to your size. And uh, we've also had it in church basements in South Carolina. <laughs> so everywhere from Hot Docs Theater in, in Toronto um, yeah. to, 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 to church basements. Um, and we've had them run in and we've had them booked in Scotland and Berlin um, and Australia, Vancouver, Toronto, St. John's, Montreal, all over the States. And so it's really, really growing. Um, obviously COVID has put a halt to that, but I think it's gonna kick off. You know, the Banff Mountain Film Festival I mentioned before is, is really my inspiration. And they're 35 years been going with a world tour. Two years ago, they had a thousand screenings in 300 cities around the world. And it's like, why can't we be doing that? You know, every city in the world right now has a vegan community. And, yeah. um, my hope is to have as many screenings around the world as we can get. And that way it happens just every year, everybody, every year in, in your community, you know, Oh, every February, you know, the, the IVF world tour comes to Toronto. So I should start looking for tickets. When is that coming? Yeah. Um, and the marketing just gets easier as you get re, you know, repeated every year. Uh, and then I really encourage the local hosts that I work with to put their own stent on it, put their own um, spin on it, you know, ask, uh, at a green carpet event, at a Q and A after, bring a celebrity in for a Q and A, bring a filmmaker in, um, bring food, uh, sell food to vendors, give away food, things like that. Yeah, even to have like a some sort of like youth element or mm. like youth programming as well for, for young young potentially young filmmakers. Mm -hmm. For um, sure. I'm going to ask you, we have a couple minutes left. So if anyone does have a question, 
put in the chat now or forever hold your peace. Um, I'm going to ask you a couple like kind of lightning roundish questions. Sure. If I may. Um, what is the most controversial film or the co most controversial topic uh, you've programmed? Yeah, uh, it's kind of an easy one because it, the first year we had their event um, here in Ottawa at the Mayfair Theater and it's the first time ever we had the event. So I'm very nervous. Don't know how it's going to go. And there was one film from France and it's called The Vegan Butcher. I believe it's The Vegan Butcher. Okay. And, um, and the whole concept of the story, it was a mockumentary. So again, a fictional film and it was a mockumentary. It was a total joke first, but it was all about... Um, giving animals prosthetic legs so you could eat the animal but not kill them okay <laughs> <laughs> so you could have it there like and so you could have a chicken and, and you could have a cow and then pig they show pigs with prosthetic legs and things like that and um the reason it was controversial is because half of the audience didn't realize it was a mockumentary okay and okay. half did and so oh, no. I was kind of sitting in the front to the side and I was kind of looking back at the audience to see their reaction through the, and it was 50 minutes. So that was a really long film for this um, event. And half of the people were like giggling and half of the people were crying. <laughs> and then like halfway through the film, people were getting up and leaving and walking out of the theater. Oh and then people God. started, um, yeah, so people were leaving. And then at the end of the film, I just kind of made a comment of like, well, that was pretty shocking. Hey, good thing it's not real. And then people started shouting at me from the audience and they were like, this is horrible. I can't believe you're showing this. This is horrible. Like, this is tremendously sad. Like, why are you doing this? Some lady told me about her father coming back from the war and couldn't afford a prosthetic leg. And I was like shell shocked on the stage oh, no. trying to MC the event and move on to the next film, but, but also, you know, accommodate their, their questions. And I was like, I'm happy to talk about this after, but it did not happen. This was not true. Um, <laughs> But interestingly enough, last year we had a film that showed animals with prosthetic legs. Oh. So, so it's actually oh. happening now. But not because people are eating their limbs. No, no. But because they've been in, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they they have had some injury yeah. and they've lost their limb or whatever. But but some oh, prosthetic limbs are amazing. But not be, yeah. Like part of that film was like this lady going to the pound with her dog, and she's like, um, "I'd like some ribs tonight," and they're like, "Okay." And they take the dog away and she comes back later and they're like, okay, we're, we're, they're like, here's your dog or here's your ribs. And then they make a joke of like, oh, sorry, I thought you didn't want the dog back. You didn't check that box. And, you know, and now she's all upset because they pretend to kill the yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah, And it just and, went over people's heads. Right. And she's like ready to eat some ribs from the dog. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that was, yeah. uh, that was fairly controversial. Yeah. Pew, I don't know. Sometimes people don't get satire, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 I would think that another topic, I guess, and I think we're going to see a lot more of it. Um, and I don't, I think you programmed Meet the Future in 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like cult, cultivated, cultured meat, cultivated right. meat yep. um, is, 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 is a controversial topic yeah. in the community, but I think it's something in our sphere that like we have, we have to talk about. Right. And yeah. know what it, what the, the uh, beginnings of it were. Right. Yeah. So I would, I would think that we're going to see a little bit more of that. Potentially. Yeah. Yeah. That was definitely a, a big topic for that film and, and that, um, that year. And yeah. And I think a little bit of the vegans, um, you know, I think the vegan curious are getting educated by it all. And yeah. a lot of the vegan that, that understand it kind of, you know, some get up in arms about it, but you know, I think people realize, or most people that are making that the cell based meat realize that they're making it for non vegans. And, and and trying yeah. to you know trying to um, end animal suffering yeah and not necessarily trying to give vegans another option <laughs> totally. um, but we did like with the judges we went back and forth whether we should show that at the festival like is mm -hmm. this is this a vegan themed film is this a vegan film like technically probably not but there is a lot of vegan theme in that film so yeah. it, w it was definitely a, a point of discussion well, I'm going to wrap it up here because I know you've got some things to do, some places mm -hmm. to be. But um, where can we find you? We can find you, of course, the handle you are currently on, Vegan Film Fest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're at Vegan Film Fest on Instagram and Twitter and Vegan Film Fest on Facebook. And uh, if you have any questions or if you're interested in a world tour hosting, uh, definitely send us a message through our, our website. It's probably the easiest way. Or, or you know, one of the other chat rooms through um, through the social media. But we'd love to speak with you, and hopefully, we can get back to Toronto in 2022 because that you know that screening we had at the Hot Docs that that TVA organized was was the highlight of of the festival to date. Um, I was blown away oh. by that. We thought we were going to have 200 tickets sold, which was great, and I showed up, and they said there's 400, 
And uh, it was like a tear in my eye at that moment. I was like, this is what it can yeah. be. Like, that was my moment of like, this is what the festival is. This is what I've been dreaming about for three years. And, and just to grow on that, um, the TVA did a great job of organizing, getting the word out. And I look forward to coming and working with you guys again soon. Well, let's, let's aim for it next year. Let's put the energy out there. Um, well, thank you, Sean. And uh, if anyone missed, like came in late, this will of course be saved on both this account and uh, Sean's uh, Vegan Film Fest account. Um, I have to plug Veg Food Fest one more time. I hope to see everybody on Saturday. Reminder that you do need tickets and that they are selling mm. out. So get them right now. Awesome. And that's it. Yeah. Thanks, and good luck Sean. with your uh, good luck with your event this weekend. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Sorry to miss it, but uh, I know there's going to be some incredible vegan food there. There will be. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. Good night. Thanks for having me.